guess who's back? That's right, it's Artie the Cigar Guy, and I'm even better at editing. Here, watch this. Hey, Artie, you're so freaking cool. Yeah, I know, Artie. I'm the coolest, really the coolest guy I've ever met, honestly, I gotta say. So freaking cool, man. And today, I have a new episode of NYC for you guys. Now, as you all know, NYC stands for Know Your Cigar. And today, we are going to be talking about Bartigas. So last time on NYC, guys, we spoke about Cohiba. Uh, Cohiba is arguably one of the more newer Cuban brands to come out. Uh, so I think it was fitting that the second episode, we should do the complete opposite and talk about one of the oldest brands that's still around, and that actually is Partigas. Our story begins with one man, Don Jaime Partigas, a Catalan. So Don Jaime actually migrated to Cuba in 1831. Joan Carnell. What the fuck is going on here, man? Go back. Mm, such a fucking retard. So after he arrived in Cuba, he actually worked for a small businessman named Joan Carnell in a small cigar factory. Having over a decade of experience in the tobacco field, Don Jaime Partigas actually established the Partigas factory in 1845. So we can say that 1845 was the year that the Partigas factory was officially established. The factory was called Real Fabricas de Tabaco Partagas. The name in English translates to Partigas Royal Tobacco Factory. So over the next 20 years, it was pretty much business as usual. There wasn't really anything that happened that was worth mentioning because honestly, record keeping was not that great during the time. So um, there was nothing recorded that was really worth mentioning. Nothing that I could find at least, except for one thing, 1868. That's the year. Now, what happens in 1868? Don Jaime was murdered. Conspiracy theories. <laughs> the speculation is that the person that did murder Don Jaime actually thought that Don Jaime was sleeping with his wife. So that's why he went and bang, bang, clapped him. After that, the same year, Jose Partigas took over the business. And that is Jaime Partigas' son. But a bit of time later, I would say a couple of years, a banker named Jose Bances actually bought Partigas from Jose Partigas. And uh, he bought not only the factory, but also the fields and all the blends. So Bances, not really knowing much about tobacco, actually hired a really famous tobacconist named Ramon Sinfuentes to help him run the business as a partner. In the year 1900, Simfuentes actually ended up buying the whole Partigas business from Bances, um, subjectively taking over the Partigas brand. Fuck, what's his name? Jose Fernandez Lopez. Jose Fernandez. After this, Simfuentes actually took over management of all the Partigas factories with a man named Jose Fernandez Lopez, another tobacconist. In 1916, Don Jose Fernandez left. Ramon. Simfuentes and Francisco Pego actually joined forces to create a company called Simfuentes Pego Isia. This was actually not a brand, but a company that owned several brands. For instance, in 1927, they actually also obtained the Ramon Eones brand as well. Shortly after they actually bought the Ramon Eones brand, they also started producing a Simfuentes cigar, but we do know that it was being pumped out of the Partigas factory. Ramon Sinfuentes actually died in 1938 and Francisco Pego died in 1940. So after they died, the, Par the Partigas brand was actually given over to the three Sifuente brothers, one of them also being Ramon Sifuentes. So, so right now we're actually talking about the son who took over the brand. Uh, at this point, since it was three Sifuentes brothers that owned the company and the Partigas brand, they pretty much took the Pego out of the name and now you have the Sifuentes Isia name that you saw on a lot of the Partigas bands uh, until recently. So in 1954, the Sifuentes family actually continued this trend and acquired two more companies, Bolivar and La Gloria Cubana, which just, by the way, quick shout out, I love them both, strong and delicious. 
Just to give you guys some perspective, in 1958, Partagas was actually responsible for 25% of all the tobacco exports in the whole country. So not only is this a company that has been around for such a long time, but it's definitely one of the bigger players in the whole game as far as Cuba goes. 1958 was a pretty good year, okay? Partagas is doing really, really well. Unfortunately though, this will not last because only two years later, we have That's right, only two years later in 1960, the Cuban government took over 16 different cigar factories and their corresponding fields, pretty much taking over the whole industry overnight. In a 1991 interview with Cigar Aficionado magazine, Ramon Sinfuentes actually talked about what went down. It's 6.30, September 15th, and a bunch of soldiers just stormed the factory. They came inside and said, we're here to intervene in the company, and they didn't even allow me to take anything from there. So, pretty much they came in, they said, you all need to leave, we're taking over all of this, and they did not let them take a single thing with them. That's how crazy this is. Funny enough, Ramon Sinfuentes was actually offered a job by the Cuban government, okay, to work as a tobacconist for them, but he actually declined and refused. So, what he did is he actually contacted the General Cigar Company in 1970, and he sold Partagas and Bolivar to them. And that's why right now we have the Cuban Partagas and the Cuban Bolivar as well as the Dominican and Nicaraguan and Honduran Bolivar and Partagas. So that's why there's two different brands because Fuente was smart. So in the 1990s, the hype did not stop. Partagas was actually responsible for the second most cigars exported from Cuba, second only to Monte Cristo. In 2002, a company named Altidus, which I actually used to work for, funny enough, bought a controlling stake in the Habanos SA brand, which is actually the, the, the brand that runs all the Cuban operations in Cuba. So in 2002, after Altidus actually took control of a lot of the Cuban operations, what they did is they got rid of a lot of the redundant sizes with the Partagas brand, meaning that there was a lot of sizes that were very similar and they just got rid of them. Also, what they did is there was a lot of uh, sizes of Partagas, usually smaller cigars, that were actually machine made. So in 2002, what happened is they actually made a lot of these smaller sizes be hand rolled as well. So uh, the only things that they still have machine rolled are usually cigarillos or club cigars. Even the smaller ones are still actually done by hand. So that's pretty cool. Also, obviously, once they took over, they also just chopped off a bunch of sizes that just really weren't selling that well, that weren't that popular, which really does make sense. Uh, the majority of the cigars that were cut, however, were machine made cigars. So. Honestly, I'm not really gonna shed a tear about that. I don't give a shit about machine-made cigars. So another thing that's actually worth mentioning about the Partagas brand is that in 2012, the Marca actually decided to switch factories. So the old factory was actually renamed the Francisco Perez factory, okay? And the other factory was moved three kilometers away. So this new factory actually produces all of the Vitolas for the Partagas brand, and both factories, new and old, are actually one of the best tourist destinations in all of Cuba if you guys are planning to go. So that's also something worth keeping in mind. Come on, cat. What are you doing, cat? Now, this is the part of the video where we're gonna get into the sizes of the Partagas cigars. And I gotta tell you, it's gonna get a little bit difficult. Two reasons why. Number one, a lot of the sizes that are produced by Partagas were actually introduced pre-1960 and there's really no way to pinpoint when they were actually first introduced. Secondly, since it does have such a long history, I'm pretty much not gonna mention any of them that were discontinued before 2010, because again, then this would be a four hour video and I don't wanna do that. So what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about the sizes that uh, were produced before and are still in production or were discontinued after 2010 because some of those are actually, you're still able to get your hands on, so they're worth mentioning. Again, I will give some uh, honorable mentions, but I'm not gonna mention anything that's pre-2010. Just not worth it, so we're not gonna get into that. Something interesting that I'm gonna mention, do you remember when I mentioned Altidus and in 2002, how they made a lot of machine-made cigars into hand-rolled cigars? Well, I will actually also be mentioning which cigars were originally machine-made and turned into a hand-rolled cigar, so keep, 
keep an ear out for that. So when I do bring up the machine made cigars, I'm just gonna say the word machine made at the end of the explanation. That does not mean that the cigar is machine made, that just means that it was until 2002 and now it is handmade. Okay, so keep that in mind. So first up, we have the Aristocrats, okay? This is a nice 40 by five and one eighths, and this is one of the machine made cigars. Next up, we have the Coronas Junior, which is a 40 by four and three eighths, and that one is also machine made. Next, we have the Corona Senior, which is a 42 by five and one fourths, also a machine made cigar. Next up, we have the Habaneros, which is a 39 by four and seven eighths, also a machine made cigar. Next, we're talking about the Lusitania, which is actually a 49 and seven by three eighths. And I happen to have one right here. Take a look at that bad boy. Now, this one is actually very popular just for the simple fact that it is very, very big. And also, extremely, extremely notoriously plugged. You've gotta make sure you have something to poke these bad boys if you are gonna smoke one. Ooh, that's heavenly. Look how big it is, though. Big, big size for a Cuban. Very popular. Next, we have the Mil Fluers which is a 42 by five and one eighths. That's also machine made. Next, we have the Partagas de Lux. Okay, that's a 40 by five and a half, another machine made cigar. Next, we have the Petite Coronas Especial, which is a 42 by five and one fourths. The well, next one is the Presidentes, which is a 47 by six and one fourths. Now take a look, I do actually own one of these bad boys too. I love the shape, and honestly, these are amazing. I love when Partagas makes stuff like this. They really, 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 really do a great job. It's nice. So next we have the shorts, which is a 42 by four and three eighths, and I actually do happen to have these as well. Uh, these are awesome, they're a quick like 30 minute smoke. They smoke great. Oh, all these partigas smell so sweet. Next we have the super partigas, which is 40 by five and a half. Another machine made one. So that's it, that's what wraps up all the sizes that were pre-1960, but are still around today. Okay? Now we're gonna go into sizes that are still around today, but came out in the 70s and 80s. In the mid 70s, we had the release of the 898, which is actually a 43 by six and three fourths, which was a very, very coveted, coveted cigar for the time and still today. It's actually called the Varnished Partagas. Also, in 1975, we've had the release of the first batch of Series D4s, which everybody, everybody knows the D4s, what they are, where they're at. Take a look, guys. I actually have a box of D4s. Oh, I've been aging these for like a year now. Oh, so soft. Smell amazing. Take a look at that. Isn't that nice? Yeah, this is one of this is one of my super stash, and the super stash is actually one of the boxes that I'm aging for five years before I smoke them. So what's funny about the D4 is that it actually came out in small quantities between the 30s and the 60s, but then it was re-released in 1975 as a main production cigar. So the next release we had for a uh, main production cigar for Partagas was actually much, much later in 2005, and that was the P2, which I also happen to have one of these. Uh, I bought a box. Mm, and smoked all of them. As you can see, it's a nice tapered end uh, partigas. Uh, really, really, really good stuff. Take a look at that. Nice, right? So that came out in 2005, and later on in 2011, we actually saw the release of the E2 and the D5. So in 2015, we saw the release of arguably the coolest line produced by the Partigas company, and that was the Lineo Maduro. So that's right, Partigas actually came out with the line of cigars that actually has a Maduro wrapper on it, which if you guys watch the Cohiba video, you'll know is something that doesn't happen too often. It's pretty cool. So we got the Maduro number one, which is actually a 52 by five and one eighths, okay? And later on in 2018, we actually had the release of the Maduro two and the Maduro three, okay? So the Maduro two, which is a short Pyramide size, was a 55 by four and three fourths, and then Maduro number three was actually a 50 by five and three fourths. So that pretty much covers all of it as far as the regular production Partagas lines. Um, I do want to mention a couple of honorable mentions, some stuff that doesn't come out too often, but personally I really, really love and I think is uh, worth shouting out. Especially if you can get your hands on these, go for it, it's a good idea. So first off, I want to talk about one of my Favorite Partagas, actually. No lie, I know I sound like I'm hyping everything up, but the Partagas Culebras. 
Culebras actually means snake in Spanish. So what you do is you take three of these cigars and then you wrap them up like that. When they're wet, they're still malleable. But once you let them sit, they dry up and they age together. And what you're supposed to do is you take them apart and you share. So you're not supposed to smoke all three, but these are absolutely amazing. And I got to say, probably one of my favorite part, I guess. If you see these, they do come out once in a while. Not too often. They're not made production line, but when they are out, get your hands on them. They're freaking great. And they pull... 10 out of 10 every time. So another one that absolutely drives me crazy is the Partagas Salamone. So this is a Casa de Habano special edition, meaning that you're supposed to only be able to find them when you go to a Casa de Habanos anywhere, you know, all over the world. They have them absolutely everywhere. And this, but this bad boy is amazing. I could easily say that it's like a bigger version of the Presidentes, but it really, really isn't. It's quite unique and quite delicious. I think it's a completely different beast, and it's 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 also like one of my favorite Cuban cigars. Um, another honorable mention that I want to make is actually the Partagas Anijados. So the Anijados is actually a project that was made by uh, Habanos. They actually took tobacco, they aged it for five years, and then they rolled. Uh, these cigars, they believe they had a Monte Cristo, they had a Romeo and Julieta, an Oyo de Monterey, and a Partagas. So these are a bit more expensive than a regular Partagas, uh, but again, they're aged for a very long time using the finest Partagas tobacco and rolled by the best Partagas rollers, so you know you're getting some of the best products out there. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much, uh, if you were to take a Partagas and pump it into hyperdrive with age. So that about does it for all the main production Partagas cigars, okay? Now what I'd like to do is just switch gears a little bit and talk about some of the more limited edition stuff. So the first time that Habanos actually too decided to release the limited edition, it was actually with a Partagas that came out in 2000. Funny enough, all of the limited edition bands actually have a date on them, but this fir first band did not. It just said limited edition, as you can see in the picture. This first Partagas was actually a Pyramides that was 52 by 6 and 1 8. Afterward, Partagas actually had eight more limited edition releases, the last being Selección Privada. Now, the Selección Privada is actually a 50 by 6 and 1 4 size. Now, uh, last time in the Cohiba video, I did bring up uh, the regional brand uh, the regional bands okay this is actually cigars that are rolled specifically for different region you have the great britain the german the the swiss the uae edition right all different editions for all different regions so if you go to casa de habanos in that region you should find that cigar they even have a canada edition and a cuba edition as well and i always wondered why they didn't have any cohiba ones and i later found out after somebody saw my video they told me that Habanos does not do regionals for their major brands. They only do it for their smaller brands. Their Cuabas, their Bolivars, their La Gloria Cubanas, you know, uh, stuff that is not really that mainstream. Uh, as far as their bigger brands, their main production brands like Partagas, Cohiba, Romeo and Julieta, Oyo de Monterey, all of those cigars actually have Anijados and limited editions, but they do not have regionals. So that's what I learned. So that about does it for all the cigars that I want to cover in the Partagas Marca. Right now, uh, I want to do something that I did not do last time, but I think it's a really good idea. It's actually somebody commented on my video and gave me this idea. So I think I think it's a great choice. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Partagas bands. The only real change in the Partagas bands as of the last couple of years is that they dropped the Sefuente Isia. Also, they added the word Cuba next to the word Havana, and that's really the only thing that I've seen. On top of that, they did produce some new bands as far as this D series, the P series, and the E series bands, which are all fairly similar, just kind of red on gold writing, nothing crazy. But as far as bands go, that's all we got. It's, Nothing really crazy going on as far as the Partagas bands, but you know, the brand itself is so strong and the band is so well known that you don't really need a change here. Now I just want to get a little bit into why Partagas is so popular. Obviously you have the age, they have that, they have the edge of experience. On top of that, Don Jaime Partagas was actually really, really well known for his meticulous selection of tobaccos, his meticulous fermentation proce processes, and on top of that, he was really, really well known for just being able to blend the tobaccos just perfectly as well. So after he died, he, his passion and his techniques were still passed down, so that's why Partagas actually stayed one of the greatest cigar companies in the whole world throughout history. On top of that, Don Jaime actually owned some of the Vuelta Abajo 
fields that the Cohiba tobacco is also grown in. So you know that he was getting some of the best tobacco out there. Cohiba has 700 acres of fields and they only use 350. What happens to the other 350 acres of tobacco? They go to other brands, exactly. The Vuelta Abajo fields have that red limestone so they do give the tobacco a very, very delicious flavor. Also, I want you guys to keep in mind that the Partagas factories produce unique sizes for other markas. So other other brands uh, that you know have like really special edition sizes, Partagas is the one that makes those. Even some Cohiba sizes Partagas makes just because of the kind of experience that they have. And to just to round it all up, I do want to bring up that Partagas, again, the Partagas factories is actually one of the best places to go if you're in Cuba. Funny enough, if you go to the Cohiba factory, they will not let you touch anything. They will not let you, uh, you know, talk to anybody. The only thing is you'll get to see just a little bit of the outside, maybe a little bit of the main lobby, but you won't see the factories, nothing. And then at the end of that, they'll give you like a Siglo 2 and that's it. And you'll only get that if you're a, if you're a journalist. So if you're not a journalist, there's no way you're going to even be able to see La Guita unless it's a special event. So, Partagas is the complete opposite. You could go in, you could literally grab a cigar right off the production line. Nobody gives a shit. All the Tresadors are smoking. There's a lot of really, really cool stuff going on in the actual factory itself. So, here's something really interesting. Early on, uh, before, you know, mass entertainment, mass media, radios, television, what, what they would do in these factories is they would have all these rollers rolling all day. And... Each one of them would actually give a little bit of money for a lecturer to stand there and read the news or read a stories. That's actually where Mont Mont the, the company named Monte Cristo and Romeo and Julieta came from, is the fact that these lecturers would read the Count of Monte Cristo or would read Romeo and Julieta and they would uh, be inspired and that's why they named the brands those names. And the one interesting thing is that Don Jaime Partigas was actually one of the first people to actually take a lecturer put him in the front and allow him to entertain his rollers and some people say because he thought about his rollers that is why he produced some of the best cigars throughout tobacco history you know and I think that's really special I think uh, a guy who didn't really have to do any of this sat down there and thought okay I'm gonna entertain my rollers they're gonna be in a better mood and they're gonna roll a better cigar and I think that type of sentiment just reverberates throughout the ages and that's all folks I love cigars, blah, blah, blah.